G'day legends, welcome to another video. Today I have found myself with a couple of Barrow green tops. Um, this is a video I've wanted to do for a while now where I get uh, one green top from every model Falcon and pull them apart and see what the differences are. There is a lot of misinformation out there about what these engines actually uh, come with. Um, some of it's true, some of it's not. Uh, it's very hard if you don't know what you're looking for uh, to, to find the right answers. So uh, I think this will be a good way to see exactly what all the differences are. Now before I go stripping all three of these engines down, uh, I thought it would be a good idea to go through the x series and see what the physical differences are. So um, quite obviously the FG, uh, which seems to be the choice people want to go to first uh, with an FG motor is um, the sump is, is a rear sump uh, as compared to the BA motor which is a front sump and the BF motor which is also a front sump. Now the, the physical differences between the BA motor and the BF motor to tell them apart uh, people usually look at the knock sensors. So a BA motor will have one knock sensor, which is located uh, there, that's that, that white plug. A BF motor will have two knock sensors. So there's one and the other one's towards the back. Hopefully you can see that, that the white plug. So one, one knock sensor at the front and one knock sensor at the back. And the BA motor has only one at the front. Another difference on the BA and BF motor here is the oil filter on a BA is substantially larger than the one on the BF. There's the BF one here. Uh, yeah, Z516 usually indicate that it's a BF block. Now the other thing with the FG motor is uh, this is an FG series one and these blocks are sort of what people go for in conversions because uh, the dipstick tube is located at the rear and that's you can see that's where it's going here but on these motors um, they also have a hole at the front of the motor in the cast to relocate the dipstick so if you get an FG motor and it needs to go in a car that requires a front sump this is very easy to relocate the dipstick tube in other FG uh, like the Mark II, that hole isn't there. So you have to drill the block to relocate the dipstick tube. Now, the other difference I noticed when I was pulling these engines out of the car, um, obviously with the FG motor having a, a rear sump, there's no inspection plate to undo the torque converter bolts. So you have to get it through the starter motor hole, which is, uh, the starter motor is usually there. <laughs> So on an FG plate here, you have a cutout um, to get to the bolts, but the BABF plate is just a normal hole. Uh, when I was trying to get the engine out, I actually went straight for the starter motor plate so I could get to the bolts, but the bolts sort of sit just outside it, they don't fit. So BABF, you have to go through the inspection plate on the bottom of the sump, uh, which I'll show you. <laughs> which looks like that. Now it's time to pull these things apart and we're gonna start with the FG motor. Before I get started, I might just let everyone know that I'm not a mechanic, I'm not a professional engine builder. I'm just a dude with way too much time on his hands. I removed this bar of green top from an April 2009 FG Ute with 292,000 kilometers on it. This particular FG was involved in a serious front end collision, which for me made the removal process very easy.
that's what you want to say in your engine. The plastic track on these chain guides are almost always cracked and broken. However, these seem to be in good condition. Even the turbo motor in my EB Falcon had broken chain guides. For a 290,000 KL green top, she's fairly clean. However, these, uh, these cams are toast. These are very badly pitted. This seems to be a thing with FG motors. I see a lot of people with FG motors complaining that their cams are badly pitted. Not sure what's causing that. So for uh, people who are uh, changing cams or valve springs or anything, some people are worried about letting go of the chain and it falling into the sump, but that doesn't happen on a barra and I'll show you why. So when you let go of the chain, under the oil pump here, there is actually a catch. So the chain does not let go of the uh, cog and you can never worry, have to worry about losing your timing marks because that'll always, that'll always be set. So some of the misinformation out there that I've read about these engines is that a gas motor will have the same exhaust valves that a turbo engine will have. So a turbo engine has the same size valves, but the turbo engine will have in-canal valves. I think that's pronounced right, in-canal. Um, in-canal material will withstand uh, greater temperatures, which is induced by the turbo. So uh, yes, one of the things I read out there was that gas motors have in canal valves. Now, Atomic Performance did a video um, exp uh, sh showing the difference between an NA valve and a turbo valve. The turbo valves have an O forged in the in the in canal, uh, and if we get a close up of these exhaust valves, you can see there is no O forged into them. I will leave a link to Atomic's video in the description um, if you want to check that out. Uh, this is the FG head. We'll also have a look at the BF and BA heads and see if they're the same as well. Alright, so we've got the rod out. Um, this is the thick rods that everyone always bangs on about. Uh, the part number is uh, 3R23, um, which, yeah, that's, I think 1R23 is the skinny rods. But we knew this was going to have thick rods, that's what everyone says, so that, at least that's right. Um, this engine does have uh, 290 something thousand Ks on it. Um, these. So these will definitely need to be replaced. Um, we'll now move on to the BF motor and see what that's got inside it. Moving on to the BF green top, which I removed from a July 06 BF Falcon sedan with 218,000 Ks on it. 
This BF was involved in a mild front end collision and already had a heap of front end parts and engine accessories removed. These cams are actually in much better condition than the FG engine. Alright, here we are with the BF head. Um, once again, just like the FG motor, the valves are just an NA valve, not the same valves that you'd find in the turbo engines. Here we are with the BF rod, just like the FG engine, it is a thick boy. We've got the same part number, 3R23. Surprisingly, the bearings are not bad compared to the FG engine. Something I forgot to mention earlier with the FG piston, um, the difference between the turbo rods and the gas rods um, and pistons. The turbo piston has a circlip where the wrist pin is and the gas motors are a press fit. Um, some performance shops or tuners will suggest that the um, piston, the wrist pin will start to walk under high boost um, or high RPM maybe. I don't know, I'm not a tuner or an engine builder. Just This is just what I've read. Um, doesn't mean you can't send it, just something you need to be wary of on a budget build. Um, these can walk. All right, here we are with the last of the green tops. I've just had a bit of a break. I cleaned all my tools and cleaned my, my workbench up. Um, I think it's important to have a bit of a break when you start getting a bit cranky. You know, you've been at this for a couple of hours and taking the time, for me, taking the time to clean my tools is actually a nice way to uh, relax, I, I feel. And then when you come back and you start working again, everything's in there, everything's where they should be in their home and everything you can find, all your tools, they're all nice and clean. So 
If you have a clean workplace, you keep your headspace clean. So this is the last green top, this is the BA. Uh, I've heard people say these do have thick rods, they don't have thick rods. Uh, I think the only way to find out is to pull it down and have a look. So let's get stuck into it. Here we have the last motor for this video. I removed this green top from an August 03 BA wagon with 411,000 Ks on it. This wagon was a complete car with no damage. I'm not even sure why it was at the wrecking yard because it looked fine other than its high Ks. So I'm pretty keen to see what condition this engine's in. Every single motor. God damn it. You would think that in the 14 years Ford produced this engine that they would fix things like oil leaks. All three of these engines leak oil from the exact same spot. Jeez, you didn't grey nick this engine. Once again, timing guides aren't broken like you normally find with these. So I just mentioned that Ford never changed their design when it comes to how they seal these engines and all the oil leaks these things have. But I've just discovered that the BA engine actually has a different type of timing cover. So this actually has a groove for a seal as opposed to the BFFG, which you seal uh, just with RTV. So it looks like with the BABF ones, this sort of lip is just is uh, lower, and then you just run a bead of RTV around. Um, but this one actually has a seal. Regardless though, whether they're RTV or they're seals, it didn't fix the problem because these things still leak like an asshole. So I've just got the head off uh, and like the other two gas engines, the valves uh, are still not the same as the turbo valves. Guys, we've just taken the first piston and rod out and just like the FG and BF motor, same thick rod, 3R23. Um, different design piston though, but if I can get a close up here, you can see the uh, dome. So it is still a high compression piston. Uh, these pistons do look like a different design though. I don't remember seeing that on the others. I might try and overlay uh, a picture of um, the other motors so you can see them all together. But overall, I'm actually pretty impressed with the condition of this engine. Um, yep, and yeah, another thick rod. So, you know, just because everyone says an FG engine's the best one to go for, don't don't really rule out a BA. If you, you can still get them pretty cheap. I paid like a hundred and something bucks for this engine. So, so let me know in the comments what you think uh, if you've had a BA green top that had the thin rods, uh, let me know. Um, let me know what your experiences are with these engines. Uh, I think I'm going to do a bit of a tidy up and yeah, we'll uh, wrap this video up.
All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If there's something that I haven't covered in this episode, please leave a comment and I'll try and get back to you or try and help find the answers. Um, all these engines are going into project cars and getting a bit of a build, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on seeing those videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.